Hello and welcome back to Bloodborne, where we have got some more business back in Yahargul. Because we haven't really done much there. We basically just got to the point where we could go to Old Yarnum and then did that. Which, I mean, it's certainly a thing you can do. And it's certainly a thing I did do, but it's not the only thing that's doable. And we shouldn't have too difficult a time, considering that we have already killed the hunters who would cause the largest problems. All right, sir. Taste hammer. That did not go as well as the last time. Come on. Need to splat the dog. There. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm gonna need you to stop that. Nice try with the rake, sir. Let's get some more bullets. Always nice to have some of those. And then you. I know your game. I know you wait behind that corner and try to ambush people. I'm wise to your tricks. All right. So, since we already explored down below, didn't we? All the way down? Pretty sure. Yes, yes, we did. So let's not go disturbing anything's best left, al best left alone. Not best left alone. For a moment I thought that spirit was the... Uh, monstrosity down there coming to play. But it was not. So, looks like nothing hiding around here. So, we head on out. Where we find these things. Which did not exist earlier on, and we wouldn't have seen them had we come here earlier on. Ooh. Okay, that wasn't a direct hit, is why it didn't do very much. Those things actually aren't too difficult to dispatch using a hammer. Alright, I'm just coming this way because I want to grab the items. Neato. This gate would have been closed if we came here earlier on. But we didn't, and it's open now. Most of the items we're going to find here are for when we would have come here earlier. So, won't be the shiniest of loots. But it will still be loots. Huh. Okay. Is that what that is? Then there's these guys who hurt to touch for both you and your foes. There's another bell ringing woman not far from here. Not entirely certain as to where. It really is a little startling when you forget that they make the giant blood explosion sound when you kill them. So, bell ringing woman should be across here. Yeah, there she is. Let's get rid of her so she can't ring her bell. Sounds like she was controlling at least one other creature. 
There's one of those things down there. And right here... Oh. There's the other creature she was controlling. Yes, over here is that elevator from way back when. And there's an open spot to jump to. But we'll save that for when we're done down there. Always nice getting some extra blood vials. And I'm just coming out here to uh, get us set up at the lantern over this way. What was that shadow? Oh, it's... Got it. Got it. Yeah. Want to set this lantern as our default once again. Which I believe just interacting with it like that is enough to do, hopefully. Otherwise, we'll just have to warp and then warp. Which would be a little annoying. Oh, hello. I guess this guy is controlled by the bell ringing lady in the church up there. Or not church, but rather the building up there. Hang on, there were actually two levels at which we could have gotten off. There's this, and then one level below, which actually seems to have nothing. And since I got off here, I... Oh, it exists so that in case you get off there and you didn't mean to, you can jump down. Nothing but ignoring here, huh? Yeah, I guess. And we'll leave that elevator up there. So, let's continue pillaging this place. So as you can see, there are several of these bone cart things over there. They're pretty easy one-on-one, -on -one, but in multiples, they can get real nasty real fast. Ooh, bolt paper. That's quite nice. And there's also something inside there that will burst out if I approach this item. But it's dead now. How could it squeeze through that little opening? Like, I'm pretty sure... Like, most of it can probably squeeze into some pretty tight spaces, because it seems pretty soft and squishy, but it's cart. Doesn't seem like it would fit through there. Alright, now can I get close enough without drawing attention? Answer? Yes. All right, and then we just hammer away. You know, I always thought of those as carts, but it looks like they don't actually have wheels. So, cart may not be the accurate word. Maybe they're just boxes. Are those things what pass for mimics in this game? Sure. It is a fairly fun weapon, but we'd have to invest more in Arcane to use it. And we'd also have to upgrade it quite a bit. So basically we're too late in the game to really make the swap over to it. Plus, Kirkhammer's pretty fun. Alright, before going that way... 
Let's go make use of the elevator. Not this way. Right, right, further forward. And then... Return to me, elevator. Here we'll have a couple dogs who have actually killed me before because these dogs are a bit nastier than normal ones. Thanks for missing me with your first bite there. Alright, so... Scurrying beast! You've nowhere to scurry, sir. Oh. One of these things. Can we get close enough to give it a nice wallop? Looks like yes. Delightful. Except really not. At least not visually. All right. Yeah, my first playthrough, these things killed me quite frequently. I basically had to learn to parry them or else I would die basically every time. Because I was still using the threaded cane at that point. I swapped over to Ludwig's Holy Blade. Um, I think once I got to the Nightmare of Mensis. Now to just sit here in this bath. And this teleports us further forward in the area. And gives us a couple options for where to go. We can go this way. Which, I believe, leads us back towards where we came from. And also puts this thing in front of us. Unfortunately, I do believe it turns around eventually. Eh, whatever. Kirkhammer, I trust you. Okay. If it didn't have range support. Oh. Okay. Oh, it can fit through the door. Oh boy, let's not die quite yet. I'm too young. That's what I wanted. Yeah, these things are still dangerous, even... As I am now, because while I can manage to stagger them if I hit them with the hammer, it's still pretty slow. We actually want to come this way because there's a bell ringing woman here who controls quite a lot. And getting rid of her early actually makes life much easier here. And then we could drop down this ladder and then go straight over there and fight the boss, but we don't want to do that just yet. We will do the ladder part, but not the boss part. And I'm just doing the ladder part to take a look, and seems, no, the ladder only exists to have a shortcut to the boss. It doesn't lead to anywhere else to explore. Oh, I was kind of hoping I'd be able to, uh... Well, maybe if we do this and then... Yeah, because you can see a clean spot where my blunderbuss was just kind of tucked there. That 
just sharp line. That's kind of silly. But I mean, it does make sense. All right, let's get rid of the shooter on the bridge. And there is the gate that we did not pass through. And you'll note that now these things fire spears of blood for maximum pleasantness. I'm honestly not a fan. Oh boy, I remember this building. At its bottom, it's got another one of those things. And at its not bottom, it's got guys shooting at you. Which makes it a little tougher to sneak up on the creature at the bottom. But maybe we'll still be able to. Yep, there it is. And it's not looking this way. Delightful. Ooh, it dodged. That's not good. Okay. These things are dangerous. Oh. I was actually kind of intending to switch to my sword and then maybe shoot it or sword it, but I guess killing it with the switch attack works. And also, another fun thing about this building is these lovely things. Just, it's creepy. You gotta wonder what they're reaching for. Are they reaching out for help, or are they reaching out to grab you? We may never know. Alright, so... Don't shoot me with your stuff. I don't like it. So it seems these things have about 900 HP. Oh, you don't want to do any shooting, do you? That's fine. I can hammer you just fine. There we go. Yeah, using stuff as cover is quite handy. Let's us deal with them one-on-one, -on -one, basically. Unfortunately, there's no cover from one of those if we're fighting the other. Unless maybe that one. Ooh, this is a melee one, so it'll come play. And thus we can use cover. Ow. Need to be careful, these things do massive damage. Especially if they grab you, but. Thankfully, we didn't have that happen. And now there should just be. Nope, there's. Wait, no, it is just the one. Hopefully. Unless there's another one hiding further on. Here, have this. And then this. Alright, I do believe that's all the enemies between us and the boss. Which means we now have free reign to go collect any loot that may exist. What's this? Oh, is it? Why, yes, yes it is. Yargul certainly is an interesting place, if rather linear. It's mostly just a single road. It's got a few buildings to break it up, though. Well, at least this part of Yahargul, there was the part before that wasn't so much a single road.
I would have liked to see more of these buildings be explorable. You know? Because most of them, the doors are just completely non-interactive. I mean, that's the case for most of this game, but... Here especially. Because there's a lot of doors, but most of them aren't even boarded up or anything. They're just... They're just doors. Alright. Looks like just this item between us and the boss. So I guess there's nothing left but to go fight it. It's not a terribly difficult boss, so we should be able to do it with the blood vials we've got now. And if not, oh no, I end up dead and try again. So, step one is actually get to the other side so that we can get up some stairs. Delightful. Ah, uh, you know it's fun when portals start dripping ooze. That means something good is going to come out of it, right? Gotta say, this thing puts the rotten to shame. Then again, Bloodborne kind of does gruesome horror a lot better than Dark Souls 2 did. I'm sure in part because it got itself an M rating instead of T, so they were allowed to push certain things harder. Right, they actually turn us around, don't they? No, they don't. We need to find the stairs up so that we can get rid of the bell ringing women. Because if we don't, They'll be trying to be mean to us for the entire fight. And I don't like when they're mean to us. Especially when their meanness it consists of powering up the one reborn. I would much rather not fight a powered up version of a boss, you know? would be nice if there was a thing for blood vials like there just was for bullets. And lastly, you. And sure, we could try a plunging attack, but we would take falling damage. And not taking unnecessary damage would be preferred here. So I believe if we just start attacking some legs, ooh yes, we can get over there. Gotta go around everything, and uh, we missed our chance to hit the head honcho. And I mean head quite literally, he does serve as the head. Oh, and it's raining body parts. Yeah, basically you hit the legs until the head shows itself. And then if you can, you get a visceral on the face, but otherwise you just hit it because it takes way more damage than anything else. 
But either way, as you can see, this thing dies pretty quick and isn't terribly threatening if you stay near its feet. So there's that. That was intimidating. Quit kicking me. Fall down, please. Alright, so no visceral, but you get to hit it hard. Seriously, doing over a thousand damage with just my regular attacks is something. Alright, okay, ow. Alright, getting out of there. Healing. Just a couple more hits is all it's gonna take. We just need to not die while we get them. And one more. There we are. Easy bites. And we get this lovely lantern. And we are able to enter the uh, Dream of Mensis. Which we might as well. Because actually we don't go to Mensis just yet. First, we end up in the upper floor of the uh, schoolhouse. Lecture building, that's what it was. Then we can light this and go spend our echoes. Okay, let's toss some more levels on the pile. Very well, let me. Uh, ooh, it's a three pointer. Oh, do we really want to go that high, though? Let's try uh, one level at a time and see at what point we can get one more Very attack well, with our great. hammer. One, two. Three, four, five. Okay, that's it right there. So our endurance is precisely where we want it to be. And I'm guessing each smack with our hammer takes 30 stamina. Seems accurate. So if we can get our stamina up to 151... Well, then we could do even better, couldn't we? Well, what is it? But, well, since we got to the point where we can do four hits and still have enough stamina to either hit again or dodge away, I think it's time to invest elsewhere some more. Strength is already diminishing. Skill we don't want. Blood Tinge doesn't really do much for us. The Blunderbuss doesn't really scale very well at all. So, Arcane? It's good for our Discovery, but we don't really need our Discovery. So, basically, yeah, it's between Arcane and Vitality. I mean, I guess Vitality isn't an awful stat. We still get a good chunk out of it. Like, one point... That's 23 on top of 1,100. That's it's not 2%, or maybe it is. Like, it's close to that, but either way, we can get some more HP. Farewell, mate. I'll just keep tossing levels into that until we hit more diminishing returns. And can we use enough of these to level up once more? No, we can't. How much do we have as far as blood vials go? We've only got three spares, whereas bullets, we are fine. So let's go spend all of our echoes on blood vials. Why not? 
There we go. And that is actually going to be it for this episode. Just, uh, I guess, which is about is the closest to where we want to be. Yeah, that's it for this episode. Join us next time when we go to Kanehurst Castle. See you then, friends.